morning. Thank you for joining us for Bible School. At Fairmount, we use Answers in Genesis ABC curriculum, an edited version. So that will, is what we'll be using this morning. Um, boys and girls, if you don't already have your Bibles, go grab your Bible. Um, we're going to be diving into God's Word today, and I want you to have that out and ready. If you take a picture of yourself using your Bible um, during the lesson, then I will send you a share for using your Bible and bringing your Bible to church. Um, the, a few weeks ago, y'all started your new quarter. And the first lesson that you were taught, you learned about was um, about the kings of Israel. And I just want to do a little recap before we go into our lesson today. The, um, the country of Israel was divided into two, Israel and Judah. And the, the king of Israel was Jeroboam. And he did evil in the eyes of God, and he uh, and many kings after him made poor choices, and they were disobeying God. They were worshiping idols. They were not heeding God's word. God warned them. He sent many messengers over a course of, uh, I think it was about 250 years, he sent prophet after prophets telling them to repent and to change their ways, um, to turn back to God. But the, the people did not listen. So that's where we're going to pick up today. Um, God is going to judge Israel for how they have been acting. Um, they have been disobedient. Um, they have been um, worshiping other gods, and, and God has to put it into it. So take out your Bible. We're going to open up to Second Kings. Chapter 17, and we're going to start in verse 5. So, Second Kings, chapter 17, verse 5. The king of Assyria invaded the entire land, marched against Samaria, and laid siege to it for three years. In the ninth year, the king of Assyria captured Samaria and deported the Israelites to Assyria. He settled them in Gozen on the Habor River and in the town of the Medes. So for three years, well, let me back up. On your note page, the, um, the Assyrians come down to Israel. So you can go ahead and draw an arrow from, um, from Assyria coming down to Israel. They come in, they go all the way to Samaria. And they lay siege to it. And what a siege is, it's a way of fighting a war without actually fighting. So they go and surround the city. And that means that nobody can come in, no supplies can go out. So the city is, is trapped. They are trapped within themselves for a period of time. And for this, they were, um, they were trapped for, for three years. So it took three years for them to finally give up and um, they they said, okay, we, we give up. Part of the culture of the time, if your um, country lost the, um, the war, then you would be, some of your people would be taken. And so that's what happened. Um, some of the people from Israel were moved to Assyria. So you can go ahead and put that era up, up there. Um, they, they were taken and they were, they, so not all of them would have been taken, but a, a great deal of them would have been taken and they had to live and settle in Assyria. Um, so that, that was a punishment for their sin. Um, so we know that God is really, really angry with them. Um, he, he's letting them be punished in a, in a harsh way. So let's look and find out, okay, why is God angry? So let's um, look down in verse 7. All this took place because the Israelites had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up out of Egypt from under the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They worshiped other gods. So they sinned against God. And, um, and that's why they're being punished. Verse 9 says, um, The Israelites secretly did things against the Lord their God that were not right. They are doing things they, they thought God didn't know. They thought they were in secret. God knows everything. He saw them. He warned them. Um, they were doing things that were not right. That's number two on your notes. Um, number one, they sinned against God. Number two, they did things against God that were not right. 
Um, they, let's look and read um, and see what are they doing. Continuing in verse 9. Um, from watchtower to fortified city, they built themselves high places in all their towns. They set up sacred stones and Asherah poles on every hill and under every spreading tree. They burned incense as the nations whom the Lord had driven out before them had done. They did wicked things that aroused the Lord's anger. Verse 12, they worship idols, through, though the Lord had said, you shall not do this. So the people, in number three on your notes, the people were serving idols, not the true God. Um, verse 13, the Lord warned Israel and Judah through all his prophets and seers, turn from your evil ways, observe my commands and decrees in accordance with the entire law that I commanded your ancestors to obey, to obey and that I delivered to you through my servants, the prophets. So he's warned them repeatedly um, that they are there that the children of Israel are sinning against him, and um, but but they continue. Um, they they just are making mistakes. Um, number four on your note says Israel would not hear the warnings. So I'm going to continue reading. I'm going to jump down to verse um, fourteen. But they would not listen. They were as stiff-necked as their ancestors who did not trust in the Lord their God. They rejected his decrees and covenant. <clears throat> they followed the worthless idols and themselves became worthless. So instead of, of listening to the warnings of God, they keep doing what they've been doing. Um, and they, they don't care. So how does all this make God feel? He's given them commandments of how they should live. They're disobeying him. He's been telling them, you need to get right. Stop. This is not right. So how does he feel? Um, verse 18. So the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them from his presence. Only the tribe of Judah was left. And even Judah did not keep the commands of the Lord their God. They followed the practices Israel had introduced. Um, so number five on your notes, God got very angry. Um, he was angry at them for not obeying. And, um, and so he decides that he's going to punish them. Um, think back, why does God need to punish sin? Um, he, he needs to punish sin because he is holy and just. You've been learning attributes, attributes of God, and two of them are that he's holy. And another one is that he's just. He, um, he does what people, the, the, he does the right thing. He does what people need and they, the punishment, there's punishment for sin. And so he's going to punish them, punish them. Um, the people of Israel no longer feared God. They no longer respected that, respected him. He had been patient, but finally he is going to send a punishment on his people. And he did in the form of Assyria, the nation that came in, um, and laid siege to them. Um, so Assyria took the land. Um, they took over the country. Um, they moved the Israelites out of their homes. And um, and that was their punishment. The people of, of Israel wouldn't listen to God. And so they have a punishment. Um, so many times in, um, in the world, even today, we get distracted from God. We get distracted from... Um, by things in in the world and um, it could be your sports that you do it could be friends it could be um, music it looks different for each one of us but we have idols even today um, it might not be a, a an image that we erect and actually physically bow down to but we certainly have things that prevent us from focusing on God and that would be um, that would be an idol um, the people of, of Israel forgot the wonderful things that God had done for them. And sometimes we do, we do too. We can get distracted from God. The Bible says that we're all born with sin. Um, we disobey. And just like God had to punish Israel, all sin must be punished. And the punishment for sin, unfortunately, is death. Um, but God didn't want us to be separated from him forever. So what did he do? He sent his son Jesus to the earth as a man who lived a perfect life 
and die for everyone's sin. God must judge sin. Yes, that is true. He hates sin. But if we believe in Jesus, who died for sinners like me, for sinners like you, um, if we turn away from our sin, we confess Jesus as Lord and are baptized, then we can be saved from our sin. Um, and we can be saved from God's punishment for sin. And we get to spend eternity in heaven um, with him. Jesus took the punishment for our sins when he died on the cross. And he made a way for sinners to, um, to, get, back, to, to get back to God. Um, we don't want to be like the nation of Israel who had to, to keep getting warned and warned and warned. And then finally had this awful punishment. We want to be um, the best people we can be and to turn away from our sins. Um, I'm going to close with um, I'm going to close with a word of prayer. So if you would um, bow your heads with me as as I end, God, thank you for being a God of second chances, who is patient with us and who um, does give us chances to get on the right path. God, sometimes we let things of this world distract us from you. I pray that you will challenge each one of us and penetrate our hearts so that you are the focus of our lives so that we put you first and nothing on this earth do we let become more important than you. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus.